Yes, lads, it's true. This card right here has made me millions of coins. And not only this card, but a majority of cards similar to this one right now could make you guys so many coins you won't even know what to do with them. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys a trading method that works so, so well on all consoles, all platforms. That is so easy to do. All you need to do is go on the market a few times a day, check some prices, and just buy low and sell high. Now I know what you're thinking, Spice, this sounds way too good to be true. And well, yeah, it's not as easy as just going and buying and selling, but it is probably the easiest method to do. It works insanely good on Xbox because of the low supply, and it works still very well on PlayStation. And this trading method is going to be flipping cards with super low supply. I kind of touched on it last week, but I wanted to kind of redo this video and make a really well in kind of kind of a really well done kind of description, uh, just describing how to do it and all that. So to start off with this method, what we're going to be doing is finding cards that have low supply. And this is usually old promo cards. Now all these cards you see on my screen here, these are all meta cards that people are still using in their teams to this very day but obviously haven't been in packs for a long, long time, meaning that there is low supply of them on the market. Just go ahead and take a look at this Mo Salah card, for example. There's literally only a couple of these cards on the market. At the very most, this is probably the most you'll ever see, nine of them on the market on Xbox. Now, of course, on PlayStation, there is much more supply, meaning that, you know, his card, there may be more of them on the market. So you do have to kind of so you will of course have different buy prices and sell prices depending on the console you're on. So what exactly we're going to be doing here is looking for cards in what I like to call their buy zones and sell zones. So Mo Salah, he always tends to drop on Xbox to a certain point before he bounces up. And this is what I consider his buy zone. Now on Xbox, his buy zone seems to be about 500 to 530k he seems to always bounce off this range before going back up and if we go and take a look at the hourly graph from just the last couple days you'll see this is very true with Salah he dropped to 550k before going back up to about 600 something k and that was just today alone if we take a look at yesterday's graph you'll see that there's times where he got as low as about 570 before going up to 600k now, on Footbin, you are not going to find that 550 buy zone very easily. And that's okay. What tends to happen is these are quick deals picked up fast that Footbin doesn't even register on these cards. So usually, I like to say about 20k lower than the low that Footbin displays. And the reason why you want to go even lower than the low on Footbin is you want to evade tax. Uh, you want to avoid it. And of course, you want to buy at the kind of best price possible. And as I said, the Salah I just sold off on Xbox, I was able to buy him at 530k the other day. So if we go and take a look at Wednesday as well, you'll see that he actually did hit around that 550 zone before bouncing up multiple times to like 600k in the five high 500k range. Now, how exactly do I determine a buy zone? So for me, a buy zone is a low price that usually never gets broken under. So on Salah, if we go and take a look at the one month here, we see that he never breaks under 530k for his daily average, and he always seems to bounce up after that. So for me, that's a good support zone, they call it, in stocks. This isn't the stock market, this is FIFA, so it's much different. But I guess we'll say it's his support. He can't really drop under it. And what always happens is he tends to rebound here. So I take that into account like the last couple weeks. I see what his lowest is, which on Xbox is 537. On PS, it seems to be 590. So then I go and take a look at the hourly from the last three days, which we kind of just did. And we go ahead and find the lowest point. So I know that his daily low from the last few weeks was 530. And in the last couple days, the lowest he got was about 540. So we know that this is the recorded lowest price. Now, like I said, there is definitely you know, times where they'll go lower. You can literally just go to the Xbox market sales and we can go ahead and find one that did go for much lower. I'm sure we'll find one that did sell for much lower if we go and just take a look here. So here you see a 549 uh, just today. Uh, let's see where else, but we're seeing these high sales at 600, 600, 650 uh, right here, a 522 yesterday afternoon of this, be of this video being recorded. So you see here 522, instantly you could sell him off for 640. And these deals, of course, they pop up 
not super often, but they do pop up good enough. And you'll see a lot of these sales, 600K, 600K, 600K. So that's kind of what we're looking for with these prices. Now, this is something that I have been doing for literally a month or so now. It works really well in this stage of the game when the supply drains on a lot of these promo cards. And I literally kid you not, with all the Salas I've traded, I've probably made 5 million coins alone on just his card. Now, of course, I have wasted a good amount on packs and stuff like that and SBCs, but I still have made about that net. And now you can do the same thing with any of these cards. KDB I took a look at, I noticed that his kind of low was 500k. So his buy zone for me was, you know, the 550, 500k range. I know he's currently selling at 600k. We see right here. Uh, that this is what's been happening with this card and you could kind of do the same thing and i go and look at all these cards and kind of determine these buy zones and then of course sell whatever the price is now of course some days are better than others you know some cards may sell better on you know one day of the week while another does better on another day that's why i like to kind of have a watch list of just a bunch of cards that i look at throughout the day uh, because yeah, some days Salah won't drop under 600k at all and I won't be able to pick him up, but maybe another card does another day. Uh, Renato Sanchez, this is a good example of a card who doesn't fluctuate much. He really just sits at 500k all the time. You know, maybe he drops to 470, but that's not enough profit after tax for you to even want to do that deal. So there are cards that of course just don't work with this. They just don't fluctuate enough. But then there are cards like Salah, like Kevin De Bruyne like Vinicius Jr. that do fluctuate a lot. The buy zone for this mini card on Xbox is about 360. And, you know, to, earlier today, uh, while I was streaming, so this is being recorded on a Friday, obviously, if you don't know. Yeah, I saw this card selling for 370 and now he's at 400K. So yeah, these cards, you know, it does take patience. It does take time. And sometimes you just don't find the deals at the right time. It's why you just kind of consistently search around. You don't have to just consistently do it, but hey, you know, one or two Salas a day, that ends up being, you know, a good 70, 80K per card or something like that. I mean, just alone, you'll see here that this Salah I had uh, earlier today did end up selling. And I bought him for 530, sold him for 615. Uh, Fabinho, I bought for 400K. I could have sold for 440 a few days ago. Unfortunately, I did not. Rare supply, I did use him in my team for a little bit, of course. So... I was a little unlucky to not get more profit, but I wasn't using him for profit. I was more using him for my team. And the same with, you know, any of the other cards that I do use, of course, as well. Now, I do need to warn you guys, of course, because yes, it does vary by market. PS obviously has way more demand. These cards will move way better in, you know, high demand times, like before weekend league, during promo days and stuff like that. So, you know, every console is a little bit different. There's also way more supply of these cards on, say, PlayStation than there is on Xbox, which means that sometimes the holds could be a little bit longer. Uh, there's obviously more cards being listed. So this method, you know, will work good sometimes, uh, but it's all about kind of finding those buy zones and those fluctuations. Like on PS, for example, we know his low is 480, 490. So any card we find at that, you know, 460 to 480 range, that is a card that we want to buy. And on PlayStation, you'll see that there was a time where you could buy them on this day. Look, there's a couple listed here at 480, right during content time. Uh, that was caught by Footbin. There's a huge few couple snipes that you could have had as well. So it's all about just kind of finding those buy zones. Uh, and of course, with high demand cards on PlayStation, you see how much, you know, how much get bought in such a short amount of time. You know, when you find those low points, you do hit those snipes. Uh, you can make some serious coins. Thank you guys for watching this video. I appreciate it. Drop a like and watch the video that's popping up on your screen right now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.